Hey, what's up everyone? It's James from Sempioneer and Just Understanding Data. And today what we're gonna be looking at is how you can compress single images and multiple images in Python. Approximately 65% of online content is images and therefore being able to compress images means that we can radically make our web pages and web applications faster and giving a better overall experience for users. So we're gonna do image compression using Python. There's several reasons why you should do image compression just natively. Uh, some being obviously for SEO, others being you're gonna pay less storage costs, and finally for three, you're gonna also have less bandwidth costs. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can do image optimization in Python, and there's lots of packages for that. So for example, a couple that I've collected for us are Pillow, Image for Web, Tinyfy, which uses tinypng.com as an API, you can even use Scikit Image, which is part of the Scikit Learn family, and that allows you to get direct access to the NumPy arrays. Um, and also a, another one, which is a Python binding for Google's Get Twizzly library. For this tutorial, we're gonna be using Pillow as our image compression library. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna download that using Python 3, pip install and upgrading pip, and also installing and upgrading Pillow. After installing all of those packages, we'll now actually import them. And we can, for example, do dir on the image class that we've imported. And you can see that we have a range of different methods that are available. And we'll be using some of these to do image compression. We're gonna try and open an image. Now you can either download your own images I've already got some bundled into the GitHub course. However, if you're just finding this video on YouTube, um, then obviously download your own images and put those in your current working directory. I already have an image and I'm gonna name a variable called im and I'm gonna use the class that I've imported previously, which is called image. And I'm gonna do image.open and the image that I have in here is called image1.jpg. Now, what's really interesting about this is we're essentially opening this image and assigning it to a variable. So when I do IM, you can see that I actually print out the image. We also have access to a range of other inbuilt Python functions and attributes on that image. So for example, we can do image.size. And here you can see that's the width of the image at 1920 and the height of the image, 1280. Let's start by compressing one image and then we'll move on to multiple. So we're gonna create a variable name called file name and I'm gonna call this image one compressed.jpg. The next thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to open the image that we had before. So I'm gonna do image.open and then image one.jpg. Now after I've done that, I can easily get the dimension size by doing picture.size and you can see if, for example, if I print dim, we've got the size. The way that we can compress an image is really simple. All we're gonna do is do picture.save, and then we're gonna use compressed, and then we're gonna do plus file name. And then the bit that we're actually gonna say is optimize equals true and quality. And you can set quality anywhere between zero to 100. 100 being the exact same quality that you already have, and zero being very, very low quality. From my current experiments, I found that 30 to 40 on quality really does reduce the size of the image, yet still gives a good quality of image. So let's set it to 30. Now, if we go into Finder and we look inside of your current working directory, wherever that is, in my case, I'm looking here, I can see that I've literally just created this image called compressed image one compressed.jpg. Here's also a comparison before and after with an image quality parameter set at 30. In order to compress multiple images, we're gonna use the OS package in Python, which will allow us to find all of the files in our current working directory. You can get your current working directory by doing os.getcwd, and for example, mine is this, right? So I'm gonna assign this to a variable named current working directory. And if we wanna get all the files inside of our current working directory, you can do os.listdir. Now you can see there's a couple of files that I don't necessarily want here, such as a Jupyter notebook, uh, uh, some checkpoints, a uh, .ds store, and also some subdirectory files. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, this is a uh, files, 
And then we're gonna loop over those and just make sure we only pick up specific files that have either a, a .png or a .jpeg and also have the word example in. So let's do that now. So we're gonna create a list comprehension called for file in files. And then let's, let, let's just start by printing out everything. What we can do is we can say if file dot ends with, we create a tuple and we say JPEG PNG. Now we can see that we have all of these JPEGs back and you could add as many extra uh, image types you want inside of this ends with. It's simply looking at the end of the string. And then we're also gonna add an extra statement to our list comprehension and in that, what we're going to do is we're going to say and file and example and example in file and now we only have the example images so we can now save this back and say images similar to what we did when we did a single image we are literally going to go for image in images and loop over the images like so we can get the image names for example by doing image split and then you can split based upon a dot and let's just print out what we get here and then we could take the first one of this like so so you can see that allows us to easily get the image names so if we wanted to we could say image name is equal to this and then we're basically splitting on this dot and saying give me the first element inside of that so again just to show you when we do image.split, we create a Python list and we can index that list to get the file name back. We're now going to open every image by doing image equals image.open. And then we're gonna do image here. And if we just print image, you'll now see that we're actually getting all these individual images with our pillow library. And we can do exactly the same that we did before we'll and what we'll do next is we'll do image.save and we'll put the file name so we'll say compressed and then we'll do plus uh, image and then we'll do uh, and then we'll do optimize equals true and quality equals 30. Now, if you look in your finder, you'll now have three extra images called compressed example image one, two, and three. So that's how you can do compression for multiple images. So hopefully you're starting to feel comfortable by compressing single and multiple images in your current working directory. I think it's really worthwhile us looking at one last task, which is essentially what happens if we'd like to go and move into another directory in our computer and also compress images there. So I've already written a function and I'm gonna paste it in and walk through it line by line so you completely understand it. So the first thing that we're gonna say is we're gonna set the directory is equal to false by default and the quality we're gonna to set to 30 by default. Now, if there is a directory, we're gonna move into that directory using os.changeDir. However, if we don't specify a directory when we initialize and call the function, then we're just gonna perform that operation in our current working directory. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna do exactly what we just did, where we're gonna list out all of the individual files, and then we're gonna find any images inside of those files that end in either JPEG or PNG. We're then gonna finally loop over all of the images, open the images, save the images with compression. In my specific instance, I have this extra folder called subdirectory, so I'm gonna get the exact path for that so that I can actually show you what would happen when we change this directory equals false to a real directory. So again, I'm gonna actually utilize this function that I've built now, and then I'm gonna do directory is equal to, and I can do os.getcwd here. So I can take this here, I can say directory is equal to this, and I know that it is a subdirectory in here, so I do subdirectory, so then I can do directory is equal to directory and I'm gonna change the quality is equal to 35. 
Now you can easily see that we have just printed a test image in the subdirectory folder. Working with images is really, really easy in Python. And what we're going to be looking at in the next tutorial is not only how we can compress images at scale, but also how we can resize images at bulk as well as compressing. Thanks for watching. And if you really enjoyed the video, please feel free to give it a like and drop a comment below and I'll see you in the next one.